Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. In this video, I'm gonna show you this more dramatic eye makeup look, which is this brown cut crease tutorial. Um, so I know it looks a bit complicated, but hopefully by showing you step by step, you can create this as well. Now, the first thing you wanna do is prime your eyelids, and this is gonna remove the redness from the eyelid and will leave you with a nice clean canvas for all the eyeshadows that we're gonna apply. And also it's gonna make your eyeshadows more long lasting. But for me, the most important step is that it just removes all the redness. Then I applied this brow gel, which I have been loving. It's from e.l.f. Cosmetics, super inexpensive. Now I'm gonna play with this palette, which is my palette that I created together with Sigma Beauty. I will link it down in the description bar if you wanna get it. And I'm gonna start with the color Cottage and apply this underneath the highest point of my eyebrow. This will just give a nice highlight, but not in a too dramatic way. I mean, this is gonna be a quite dramatic eye look, um, so it doesn't even matter. Then I applied some eyeshadow guards. If you don't have these, you can also use some regular sticky tape. It's just gonna make it more easier to blend in my opinion, but I will show or explain more on that later. So I just applied them kind of starting at the outer part, following the outer part of the brow. Then I set my whole eyelid with a little bit of translucent powder just to lock the primer in place. And I, I applied a little bit more of the white eyeshadow just to intensify it a bit more. Then I went in with the color Levine and I'm gonna use a super tiny brush. I believe this one is actually from Morphe brushes. And I'm gonna start at the outer part of where the eyeshadow guards kind of in the middle part of like the beginning of the eyelid towards the brow, you know, like just in the center. And I'm gonna create this round shape. Um, it's gonna be a bit higher than where my normal crease is, but you can apply it higher, you can apply it lower. It kind of depends on what you like, how intense you want the cut crease to be. And of course, it also depends on the shape of your eye. So you kind of have to see what works best for you. Um, and then after creating that line, we're gonna blend a little bit of the color Virgo right above the black line. You can see the black line is not super precise, so you can really, it's more like if you have like a sketchbook, <laughs> this is gonna be like the sketch, kind of the guideline of where you want the cut crease to be. You wanna make sure that both sides are equal, so take your time with this. Then after blending that color Virgo, I went in with the color July 11, and I'm gonna blend this in between where I just blended that Virgo color and in between the black line. And also kind of on top of it because we do wanna smudge out that black line so it looks less harsh. So my tip would be to not press your eyeshadow too hard while you're creating the line so you can still kind of smudge it out and make it more soft. So you can already see that there's kind of like a transition going on, even though you can still see that line, but don't worry about that, we're gonna fix that. You can see it kind of goes from black, brown, to light brown, to white, like underneath the brow. So we're really gonna focus on making the transition look as nice as possible. So in order to do that, you have to at least have like a light color, a medium color, and a dark color in order to create that transition. Then I went in with the color Cinnamon Roll, which is a little bit lighter than that previous color, so I'm blending it a bit higher, so we're gonna kind of perfect that transition line. If you feel like you have too, like your lines are too dark, you wanna go in with a lighter color around the, where you find it hard, and this will soften it out. If you feel like something looks too light, you can add more darkness. But my tip is just to always use a very light hand when you use a dark shade. So if you made a mistake, you can easily like soften it out. But if you use like a lot of that dark shade with a really hard hand, it's harder to blend it out because you have already quite like pressed it on, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of going back and forth with the shades just to see what looks better. Then I went in back with the color July 11. Um, you just wanna see like what you need. Um, I felt like my lines were a bit too harsh. So I went back in with the color Virgo again and blended around the edges. I mean, just blend as much as you want. Um, and I feel like the center of the darkness of the video clip kind of went from light to dark, but this is how it's currently looking. Now you wanna go in with some concealer and a flat brush. This one is actually from AliExpress. It was a super inexpensive brush, but it does the job. Um, so I'm gonna create a line right underneath where we started that line all the way at the beginning. So 
if you feel like you want it a bit higher, you can always apply the concealer higher than where you made that line. So you can kind of change things up if you want. Uh, but I was actually really happy with the shape that I created. So I'm just following the line that I made at the beginning. Now, after applying the concealer all over the eyelid, I'm going to go in with the color Cottage. And I'm going to just kind of press this in the inner corner of the eye. Um, just to go in a few times because I wanted it to be as white as possible. And for this look, I'm actually only using matte shades. Um, of course, you can pop on like a shimmery color on the eyelid if you want. Um, that's going to be super pretty as well. But I just wanted to focus on matte shades only. Then I went back in with the color Virgo, which we used earlier for in the crease as well. And I'm going to kind of blend it in the center part of the eyelids. Also softly blending it on top of that white. This way it's kind of melts into each other, which will give us that nice gradient that goes from light to dark. Then the same with the color July 11, applying this at the outer part, but also slightly on top of that color Virgo to kind of melt it into each other. And you can always go back in with that color Virgo on top of the color July 11 to make it more seamlessly, because this is like a shade which is quite a lot darker in comparison to that previous color. So you can always go back in with that color Virgo if you feel like the, the edges are too harsh. But you can also use, for example, the color... What was it called we used it as well it was more of like a yellowy color maybe i'm actually going to use it i don't know i'm like doing a voiceover so i'm not sure what the next step is going to be oh yes i'm doing that the color cinema roll that's the one that i was talking about so i'm going to play it kind of in between virgo and the color july 11 that dark shade that i just applied and this is going to make the transition look more smooth because i felt like the color Virgo was super light in comparison to the color July 11. So you want to kind of use a shade which is in between those and this is going to make the transition look so much better. You can already tell it looks so much better than before. Um, you can really see a nice gradient go from light to dark on the eyelids. So that's what I meant with when I was saying like if you feel like the edges are too harsh, use a lighter color around that harsh edge and this will soften it out. Hope that makes sense. Then I went in with this Wicca Jolly Liner from Sigma Beauty and I'm gonna go for a wing liner today. And this is what I was talking about earlier. I used the eyeshadow guard and it left me with a sh super sharp edge. And now I can just kind of follow in that line for when I want to create that wing line. Um, because you can already tell kind of I have this sharp line uh, right in that crease area outer part I don't know how you call it but I'm sure you know what I mean you can see a really harsh line at the outer part so now I can just kind of follow a line right here where I'm doing right now towards that line in my crease and I have like this perfect guideline for my wing liner so this is just an easy trick I mean it doesn't you don't always have to do this but if you want it to look perfect this is a really easy way and hopefully that will just kind of help you guys so I do have a video where I go more in depth on how I make my eyeliner more perfect, but I will link that down in the description bar in case you're curious. Then now I went in with this liquid liner from Anastasia Beverly Hills and I like to use this on top of my gel eyeliner. It just makes it so much more black and it has a really nice matte finish. Um, I've said this before, but layering your eyeliner makes it stand out more. And in this case, it also makes it more black and more waterproof. Love how it looks so far. Now I'm going to go in with the color Levine again and use this with a Sigma Beauty flat diviner brush, like right underneath the lower lash line, kind of starting from that point where my eyeliner starts towards the middle part, but I applied it like not all the way towards the inner corner underneath the lower lash line, but kind of stopping halfway. Then I go in with the color July 11 and use this color to smudge it out. I am going to apply this color like all the way underneath the lower lash line, but I only wanted some super like that black darkness at the outer part. So I'm just going to apply this color and blend it back and forth, of course, doing it at both sides of my eyes and just smudging it out until I'm happy with how everything is looking. So you can always apply more, just feel like do whatever you think looks good. And then I went in with this pencil, which is by Makeup by Mario. It's the soft brown one, which is one of my favorites. For some reason, it looks kind of reddish on camera, but it's a really beautiful brown color. Then I went in with some mascara. 
Uh, I'm not focusing too much on the upper lashes because I will go in with false lashes so it doesn't really matter how they look. As long as they are a little bit black so they fade nicely into these lashes. So these are the lashes I'm gonna use and these are from the brand Pinky Goat and these are actually lashes that you don't have to apply glue on. They already have like a sticky lash band. I really like these lashes. I felt like in the inner quarter they didn't stick as how I wanted it to be. So I don't know what to say. Didn't work perfectly. I mean the lash band was sticky but I just noticed that my inner corner was a little bit wonky. But yeah this is the end result. I really hope you all like how it turned out. Let me know if you want to see more of these dramatic cut creases. Um, I love to do them so if you are interested I can definitely do it more often. Now don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That's really helpful for my YouTube channel and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!